Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be showing you an extremely useful, ultra compact, and very cool electronic gadget. What you see right here is probably the smallest and most powerful digital power supply that you can get and smart digital monitor. The two of these are used together, which I'll show you in a minute. This one has a screen on it, 2.8 inches. Screen resolution is 320 by 240. The power supply, you can input voltage between 4.2 and 30 volts. Maximum input current of around 6 amps. Output voltage, 0 to 30 volts, 0 to 5 amps, 90 watts max. Let me open these up so we can take a closer look at this, and then I'll show you exactly how it works. Now you can see right here. Let me remove them from the cases. The wires appear to be made of silicone and they're 16 gauge. The ends appear to be gold plated and this end here looks like copper. And the same for this one. Let's take a close look at the monitor first. Okay, you have the 2.8 inch screen and this entire screen could be lifted all the way up to where it's vertical, 90 degrees to the monitor. I'm not going to lift it that far because it's going to be reflecting into my camera, but I'll just show you there. It'll go all the way up. Once I power it up, I'll show you what all these buttons do. Over here is a value adjustment knob and menu adjustment knob. Very simply, just grab it. Let's take a look at the sides. Let's look at the back, and you can see it operates using a USB. This side has nothing, and there's a look at the back. There are magnets in each one of these corners, and you'll see why they're there in a minute. Power input for the monitor is DC, 5 volts, 100 milliamps, and this is wireless. This is very cool. So what this is going to do, it's going to connect to the other unit so it can monitor wirelessly the power output from that unit and you can adjust it in many different ways and also view the voltage output. Let me show you the weight of the unit. Okay, I set for grams. And here we go. Pretty heavy. 101.2 grams. All right, now here's the power supply. This is your positive and negative output. Over here is the front display. You'll get the voltage reading, the power output, everything will be shown right here, including the input voltage. You can adjust the output voltage with this knob. This actually locks it on and locks it off. Menu button and set, you're going to see all that in a minute. Take a look at this side. And you can see right over here, the rubber feet, this goes straight down. And the monitor goes right on top. And there is a magnetic catch. You can feel it, it engages, but not enough that you can lift it up by the top piece to lift up the power supply. And that's how it looks when it's all together. Now the very interesting thing about this is that this unit on top, the monitor, can actually control and monitor up to six different modules. So I only have one connected right over here, but you can stack six of these and you can have six different power supply outputs. Of course, each one of these power modules need their own power supply going into them. And for the demonstration, I'll be using a switch mode power supply for my HP printer. It's two amps, 19 volts. Right over here is where you would plug it in. That's a five millimeter by two millimeter jack. You can also use USB-C. And right over here is where you would plug in if you had to upgrade the firmware. All right. So let me power this up so we can take a closer look at it. 
the 19.5 2 amp power supply from my printer goes into the lower unit, the power supply, and right over here is the USB cable that's powering the system monitor. As soon as the USB is plugged in, the unit powers right up. Keep in mind, the bottom unit, the power supply, can be used without the monitor. So if you don't want to use the monitor, just lift it off. You can use your power supply just like this. It's ridiculous how small this is. My hand covers it up. It's just extremely tiny. So while that's off, let me just power the bottom up. Should be able just to push one of these buttons to turn it on. Is it this one? There it is. You push the run lock button. And you can see it's set right over here. 14 and a half volts, 5 amps. And 0 watts. And it says off. So you push the menu button. And it says input voltage 19.45. That's coming from my printer cable. Let's push it again. And that's it. So you get the 19.489 from the printer. And it's off. You want to turn it on, you would push the run lock button. See, now it's active. Push it again, and the blue means you're ready to go. If you see this turn red, that means you're having a problem with your output. You're drawing way too much power or too much current. So let's push this button here to turn it off. If you want to set the unit now, you push the set button and you can go back and forth to adjust the voltage. Now it's slow doing it with this knob, but it will go all the way down. If you use the monitor, you can instantly adjust this value. So the only problem using this by hand like this without the monitor is that you have to turn this knob a lot more to get it adjusted. So if we want to set it for 12 volt output, just keep rolling along. Keep going. All right. There we go. Then maybe I want to set this to a maximum of one amp. Push the set button. Then I do the same thing. What if I can go over the top? No, I can't go over the top. It has a maximum output of five. So you see what I'm saying? It takes a long time to roll through this. So I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. I'm going to show you how to do it with the monitor so you don't have to spend all this time doing it by hand. Let's lay that down. Now to wirelessly connect the unit is not that difficult. Right over here you can see it says press to auto match wireless address. So we're going to push confirm which is above this button. And you can see confirm right over here. That's this button in the middle, confirm. I'm going to push that. And it says matching. So what I have to do now is go down here, push menu and hold it. Rotate the knob and I'm going to hit set. And you can see up here now, 2.411 gigahertz, and it has the address for this device at the bottom. It's now connected. So let me hit over here, cancel. And let me hit escape right here. All right, with the wireless connection made, you can now see what the bottom module or the power supply is set for. 12 volts, 4.88 amps. And over here is the input voltage, 19.473. And 0.131 amps or 131 milliamps of current being used to power the power supply. 31C is the temperature of the power supply unit. If you push info right here, in this screen here you're going to see all the specifics for the power supply which is number one. So if you have six different modules underneath this screen you're going to see everything displayed in rows right over here. So we have the 12 volts, 4.888 amps, and you have voltage output, current output, power output, voltage input, current input, temperature, saying that this is locked, and it says it's off. Let's go back out of here, hit escape, ESC. To turn on the power, push this button right down here. And you can see that line right here, right across the top. Each one of these divisions is 3 milliseconds, and you can adjust that by rotating, I think, this knob. Yep, see it's going 12, 24. I think it goes all the way up to like 1,000. Let's see how high it goes. Hmm, it's over 1,000. Wow, 
Wow, it's almost at two seconds. All right, so it stops around two seconds. Let's go back. Let's bring it all the way back down to that low level. All right, so back down to six milliseconds. So here we have 9.4 volts in the bottom left. The top is 12.5 volts. So we have 3.1 volt difference between the top and the bottom here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, five divisions. So each one of these is right around 620 millivolts each. Try and get an idea of the top and bottom of that ripple in the line. It looks like maybe 100 millivolt, which is not bad. If you want to freeze the waveform, you just push hold. And you have a good look at it right there. And to get it going again, just push play. Earlier I showed you that you had to spin this wheel a long time to get the voltage down here to change and the current. So let me show you how to do that very quickly now with the monitor connected. You're going to push this button here, it says modify. And you can see it says forward and backwards. See it changes the position that way. So I'm going to go down here, rotate this button here to change the position. Let's put this, and this one here does the value. Let's put that down to like two amps. So let's go forward and let's raise this one to 18 volts. Actually, you can go all the way up to 30. Let's go back down to 12 and let's put a load on this. All right, so 12 volts. And here we go. The load I'm using is right around 27 watts. So it's a little under this setting. So this is two and a half, 12. You can see that line is very smooth now. And we have the input voltage, it dropped just a little bit. Current is 1.48 amps on the input, 34C. I'm going to push the info button now. And right over here, power output, 24.51 watts. That's the voltage in, you can see everything perfectly. 2.043 amps at roughly 12 volts. And let me take off that load. All right. And you can see with no load, there is a little ripple. And as soon as the load is connected, it smooths right out. And if you want, you can still use this wheel. Take a look at the current here. You could adjust that. Now I'm going to take the two wires right here we're going to short circuit them and right down over here you're going to see a red light come on indicating that it's overloaded and it should not damage the unit here we go all right it's overloaded it should go right back up and as you just saw it did not damage the unit when the output was shorted if you have limited space in your work area then you would definitely want to consider getting one of these units the only thing is they are a little up there in price, but you also have to realize it has the ability to control six of these different modules. You have this nice display on top, and it does have a high power output. Now there is one last thing I'd like to show you. you click on config, and it says auto match. So let's go over to more, and then we're going to click confirm. And that shows you the version number of the firmware. If you ever have to upgrade the firmware, the manufacturer made it very easy. You could visit their website. They included this cable and it plugs into the back of the power supply. You would simply download the file and upload it to the power supply. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.